for the teaching. It's leading us up to Easter. And the question that I posed to our, our panel is this, and I've phrased it in different ways. Does it matter that he rose from the dead? Does that change things? Or does it have impact on the church? Well, as you know, I mean, that's a very, obviously that's a leading question. Um, of course it changes things. Paul said, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, all is for naught. If he didn't rise from the dead, let me give you the Keith Howard translation. If Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, turn out the lights, close the doors, lock it up. We're all just wasting our time. We might as well just have a club somewhere. We could accomplish that. This is not a club. This is the church of the risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who conquered death, hell, and the grave. So, does it matter that He rose from the dead in 2020, uh, in AD 32, even for us now, 2,000 years later in 2021? You better believe it does. It's everything. It's everything. So, I, I want to begin tonight with a quote. And by the way, this is... It's no exaggeration for me to say this, and I truly mean this. This is one of my favorite quotes of all time. Not just about the resurrection, but I mean for all time, about anything. I just, I love this quote by Peter Larson. He says, The life of Jesus is bracketed by two impossibilities. The virgin womb and the empty tomb. Think about that. The life of Jesus is bracketed by two impossibilities. The virgin womb and the empty tomb. Now, he goes on to describe it like this. I mean, just like as if it were bookends. And that you were thinking of the life of Jesus. Could you script it any better than that? I mean, is there any possible way that you could describe it in any better scenario than that? The virgin womb, the empty tomb, and these are the two brackets, the two bookends of His life here on earth. But really, I love the, the next part He says. He... He came to our world and entered through a door that was marked no entrance. And he left through a door marked no exit. <laughs> Just think about this. Jesus is going to become a human. And so, well, how do you become a human? Well, it, it's natural. Um, husband and wife come together. They have sexual relations. Their love produces a child. And that's the only way to become a human. And Jesus says, I, I choose not to do it that route. I'm going to start this whole new, different thing. God will become flesh. Well, sorry Jesus, you can't do it any other way. That's the only way we have of becoming a human. Oh yeah? <laughs> the Holy Spirit hovers upon a virgin. And he, he walks right through the door that says no entrance. And he's welcomed to the earth. Yeah. Only God could do that. Um, it was prophesied 700 years ahead of time. Just think about this. The prophet Isaiah says he will be born of a virgin. How amazing is that? I mean, we've read it so many dozens of times, but let that wash over you in a new way. Seven centuries before Jesus was born, Isaiah, with his prophetic eye, he sees into the future and he says, He is coming, a son is born, a son is given. The government will rest upon his shoulders. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. One of the things he says of him is, the virgin will conceive. The virgin will be with child. 
It's amazing. No entrance, but he just, he just walks right through and enters into humanity. And then on the other end of it, and this is really what we're focusing on, right? No exit, Jesus. The only way you can exit is to die and stay dead. That's how you leave humanity. And Jesus says, um, I don't think so. Walks right through the no exit sign. He dies and three days later rises from the dead. Have we heard that so many times that we just fail to really take it in? Think about how powerful that is. He rises from the dead. He conquered death. Amen. He was resurrected. And so he goes through the no exit sign. Right through the no entrance into humanity. Right through the no exit into eternity. And he is still living today. In fact, the Bible says that He is at the right hand of our Father in heaven and that He ever lives to make intercession for us. That's what He does. So, to answer the question, what does the resurrection have to do with us in 2021? It has everything to do with us. Um... For people who feel that their life is impossible. People who feel like there's, there's a no entrance sign in front of me. I can relate to the no exit sign. I just don't see any way possible. But we serve the God who is the God of the impossible. He says all things are possible. Only believe. So, if you're facing sickness, and you might feel trapped, you might just think, boy, this disease seems to be getting the upper hand on me. But God is greater than sickness, and God is, is greater than even death. You might be facing pain in your marriage, I have a very dear special person who is facing divorce that they didn't want. But God will walk through the impossible with you. And um, so instead of no entrance and no exit, really, maybe for us, the application is that we see this big sign that just says, no way. There's just no way. And you put the no way sign over whatever applies to your setting. Whatever you're up against. It may be a huge struggle. You might think, well, just financially, I, I, I never see it out. I don't see any way to get out of this. Put your no way sign up there and just know that God is the one way. So, um, I want to look at John chapter 20 tonight for a few moments. And um, Oliver and, um, I, and, and I also see Josh back there. So you guys, I forgot, and it's on Wi-Fi, and that's why the signal is buffering so bad on the receiving end. Can you end that? And do you, if you guys can figure out how to go out of, turn Wi-Fi off, and then just start another, another broadcast. I apologize. I'm getting... Um, some, uh, some comments and, and things that I'm seeing. So we're looking at John chapter 20. And the scene, it's at the tomb. And really, what I want to concentrate on as we're talking about the resurrection. And by, by the way, the five different speakers, I don't, there's no parameters. I mean... Some of us might use the same scriptures, the same place in the Bible, the same people, um, or maybe none of us will. I don't know. But I do know that if we do, it'll be, uh, each one will bring our own fresh approach to it, and it'll, it will be something different in the way it's approached. And as I'm looking at John chapter 20, 
I'm thinking of three words, dark, cold, and empty. And really, I'm thinking about, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about Mary's heart, Mary Magdalene. How, how dark and how cold and how empty her heart was. Probably just as dark and cold and empty as the tomb itself was. So in that early morning, she goes in the early morning hours pre-dawn. No doubt it's cold. I can almost feel a bite in the air. The chill of the scene. She's going to the grave early in the morning. It's dark, it's cold, but the word that captures it most of all is the word empty. It is, it is an emptiness in that tomb that it, it, it resonates a thousand times in Mary's soul. And when she realizes that Jesus' body isn't in the tomb, she had to be even more empty than ever. Because at this point, she's not realizing that He rose from the dead. That's the furthest thing from her mind. What she really thinks is, oh my goodness, somebody came and stole Jesus' body. Now to add insult to injury, now He's missing. Who would do such a cruel thing? And she's broken and she's, she's just alone and... I think many individuals can relate to Mary. We, we know about that no way sign, the no entrance, the no exit. Um, you know, um, I heard Neon Dion. Any of you remember Dion Sanders? He's, man, he's one of the most phenomenal athletes ever in the history of sports. He's one of the few guys uh, on the planet that successfully played Major League Baseball and National Football League. He was in both at the same time. Uh, Bo, Bo Jackson did that. Uh, I, don't know if any, I don't know if anybody else that did it actually, but they made the only two. But incredible athlete, a champion's champion, multiple championship rings. And I heard him talk about the, the emptiness in his heart before he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And you know, Neon Dion, he's, he's a flashy guy. And he, the way he said it was, I had a garage full of the nicest sports cars you could ever buy, but I didn't feel like I could go anywhere. I wasn't going anywhere. He said, I had a closet full of the most beautiful suits, the most expensive suits you could ever buy, but I felt naked. See, it doesn't matter if you're on that end of the spectrum or the other end of the spectrum, because all of us have a Jesus-shaped hole. We all do, and we need the peace that only Christ Jesus can bring. And so, we can relate to that, but... Here in verse number 14, um, John chapter 20, verse 14, and what are we going to look at for just a moment? There's three different exchanges between Jesus, the risen Jesus, the risen Christ. Three different exchanges between Him and Mary Magdalene. And I think they teach us something about how God feels our emptiness. So at, at verse number 14, at this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, and she did not realized that it was it was Jesus. Um, I think I think there's three different levels of investigation that happen, maybe for each one of us or maybe for different people. Uh, but I think I see it embedded in this story. Uh, for instance, John arrived but did not go in. Peter gets there second, he goes on into the tomb. Mary is even different from the other two on her investigation. So, John identified the emptiness. Peter investigated the emptiness. But Mary identified with emptiness. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, she stayed there. She did not want to leave. In fact, I, I know a lot of stories that I could tell you about that from doing funerals and going to... Um, gravesides and, and funeral homes and different things. And 
sometimes family members just don't want to leave. I, I don't want to leave my loved one and just linger and wait. Um, I remember one time, one of our one of our members had passed away, and I was with the family here from our church, and and um, we stayed we stayed up all night. We just sat up together with with the one who had passed away all through the night. Um, the the doctor, the nurse, rather said, "Well, you've got six hours, according to." You know, health practices, the coroner must come after six hours. How long do you want to stay? Six hours. I, I don't want to leave. And so there we just sat. And we, and sometimes, and I think that's how, that's how Mary is. And um, I can probably just picture, you know, at some point during that morning, somebody saying, come on, Mary, let's, let's go home. There's nothing more you can do. Maybe that's what it was like when they buried him on Friday. They got all the spices together and maybe she just wanted to linger there and stay. And Maybe it was John or Peter. Mary, come on, just go home. But she wanted to stay. And, um, and so in this first exchange, we see Jesus asking Mary, why are you crying? And I think that's a very important question. It relates to the resurrection of Jesus. Why are you crying? He could ask you and me the same thing today. Um, he might say it like this. What is missing? Maybe more accurately, who is missing? I, I think that one way to answer this question is really, can you define what it is that's bothering you? I, you might not be like me, but, but this is how I am. When something's really bothering me, it gets it weighs me down. It, it just gets in my spirit. It just sort of keeps me paralyzed until I deal with it and move on. And it's never 10 things or 20 things. It's usually, almost always, there's just this one thing. It's just one little thing that I know, okay, I've got to, I've got to deal with that thing. And, and I see Jesus here, the risen Jesus, talking to Mary, and he's, he's saying... Um, Mary, why are you crying? Can we define that? Uh, so, sometimes when, when we have issues and problems in our life, it's, it's sort of like the, uh, the advice that the old woodsman gave to people um, when he was explaining to them how, to, how do you trap a porcupine. And um, he said, well, the way you did it, the way you do it is, you, you get an old wash tub and you sneak up behind the porcupine very carefully and you drop the wash tub on top of him. And then he says, now this will give you a place to sit while you ponder your next move. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes life is like that. We, we don't know exactly what we're going to do, but we know we have to keep moving forward. And if we can define, why is it I'm crying? Um, I love this, um, this um, acronym that I want to give you for the word empty. Empty stands for endless, mysterious, probing that yearns. Empty. Endless, mysterious, probing that yearns. Sometimes emptiness is a bad thing, but sometimes our emptiness is intentional and God will actually work through the mechanism of of that emptiness now so so Jesus asked her why are you crying but then part of the solution some way somehow part of the impact of the re resurrection has to be that we get to know Jesus that we really get to know him I mean, I'm attracted to the fact that Jesus knows Mary by name. He calls her by name. Mary. Jesus knows you by name. He calls you by name. He can speak your very name. Um, he cares about your marriage. He cares about your physical health. Uh, he cares about you very much. And guess what? 
This is the point in the story where she, she recognizes, oh my goodness, this is Jesus standing right in front of me. She knows him too. Rabboni. It's a word that means teacher. Now, I wonder what that moment was like. Was, was Mary just um, so heartbroken and filled with tears that she just had not taken the time to look and realize, oh, that's Jesus? Maybe, probably. Or was it that Jesus now in his transfigured body is so different on a level where she it didn't even cognitively, it didn't click in her mind that she was talking to him or who he was yet. Why the last she saw his cold, lifeless body, they're wiping the blood stains off and putting a cloth over him and placing him in a cold, dark, empty tomb. But now here he is standing in front of her, transfigured, dazzling, white, brilliant, and calling her by name. And when she heard her name, that's when she recognized him. Rabona, she knew him. You know, John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. And Jesus knows us. Um, and, and about that emptiness, here's a great verse that I, I would encourage you to really search this verse out and meditate on it. Proverbs 20, 27 says, The lamp of the Lord searches the spirit of a man, it searches out his inmost being. So the searchlight of God shines on us and it, it uh, he, you know, he wants to just feel this emptiness. His light comes in. He, he longs to feel this emptiness. And so if you find yourself thinking, there's got to be more. There's, man, I'm missing something. What is going on? There's something just not quite right. Well, you're right. There is. There's so much more. You're wise to think that. Um, how do you think God would respond if you were to totally, I mean totally give Him your life today? How would He respond? You think He would say, what took you so long? Or you think He would say, told you so. You think he would punish you for the time you lost? I don't think so. I think he would put a robe around you, put a ring on your finger, put a crown or a tiara on your head, hug you, my child, you are mine. You are my child and I love you. Um, it's interesting this, this concept of knowing him and no doubt you've heard this before, but um, the same word is used for, for um, intimacy of a married couple it, that is used for knowing in the New Testament idea. It traces back to Old Testament idea of Adam knew his wife Eve and conceived a child. And so it's not giving any kind of a bad picture, but what it's saying is when you really spend time with the Lord and you really get to know Him, then it, it takes you to this new level of uh, understanding with Him. I, I, I was thinking about this a, a few years back. The University of Northern Iowa had a general art class, and the teacher uh, on Monday, they had his Monday, Wednesday, Friday college class. And so on Monday, as class was ending, she said to her students, here's a lemon. She had brought with her that day a bag of lemons. She gave each student a lemon. And she said, no instructions other than, I want you to memorize your lemon between now and Wednesday. They didn't know what that meant. Carry it with you everywhere you go. If you go to the cafeteria, if you go to work, always have your lemon with you. And so on Wednesday, they came back for class. And as they walked in the door, she said, put your, your lemon in the bag. And 
all the students, and there's 20 students that put all these lemons in a bag, and then one by one she said, come up and reach into the bag and identify your lemon. And do you know most of them were able to find their lemon? Because, why? Because they had handled it, they touched it, they, they recognized the feel of it, the shape of it, and I think it ought to be that way with us and God. Get to know Jesus. Get to know Him. And so then there's this uh, third exchange at verse 17 between Jesus and Mary. Jesus says to Mary, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And then Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news I have seen the Lord. And so, on some level, how does, it, how does it impact us that Jesus rose from the dead in AD 32? Well, one thing for sure, we've got to be just like Mary, and that is we've got to spread the news. This, this news is the best news ever in the history of the world. And she didn't keep it to herself. She went back to the disciples and said, I've seen the Lord. <laughs> They said, you're off your nut. You're crazy. We saw him die. He's in the tomb. But she convinced them and they go running and looking. And Maybe it was, well, at least you better check it out because if he, somebody stole his body, you know, they finally go and look and then that encounter happens as the John and Peter leave off and then she finds Jesus himself and then announces it to everyone. And you and me, we're the same way. Don't you think she was just overjoyed when she realized that, um, that Jesus was alive? You and me today, it's the same way. We, we, don't, we don't have to be discouraged. Sometimes life can really beat you up. You know, I think all of us, and I've been talking about this on Sundays, but at different times we're strong or we're weak. But, but God is faithful. And the Bible speaks of the challenges that we go through as He calls them light and momentary trials. Someday when we get to eternity and we see the glory of God and, and He starts unloading all of His rewards, His favor and His blessing, it's going to be worth it all. So... I, I, that's what I had tonight. I just wanted to share with you um, Mary encountering Jesus, Him saying to her, why are you crying? Her recognizes him, recognizing Him. He calls her by name. He does the same thing with you. And as soon as she recognized that He was alive, she spread the good news everywhere she went. I think it's no different in 2021 for you and me than it was for Mary in AD 32. I want to just pray with you. And... Um, so let's, in fact, would you guys, would you stand? And I want to just pray a, a blessing and pray for God's favor upon your lives and, and our mine too. Lord, Lord Jesus, Lord, thank you for being our Savior. And Lord, tonight, I'm just speaking over the ones whose hearts are heavy. That you would bring encouragement and strength. No, that doesn't apply to all of us. Some of us, things are going just fine. And we are sort of just sitting on top of the world with our feet dangling off and thanking you for all the blessings. Praise your name for those seasons. They are so enjoyable and they come from you. But for some of us, it's a difficult stretch. In fact, for many people coming out of 2020 and going into 2021, it's still hard. And so, Lord, for the ones who are seeking to be closer to you, I'm just proclaiming over them that they have it tonight. In the name of Jesus, yes, you have what you need. You have the longing of your heart. So just simply recognize that Jesus is alive, that he knows you by name, and get to know him. I'm proclaiming over our lives a new season of really getting to know you, Lord. Getting to recognize your voice. Just like the verse that we read tonight, your sheep hear your voice and obey. We recognize your voice. Let us 
have ears that are in tune with your spirit and recognize your voice, O oh, Father. And, and we give you all glory, all praise, and all honor in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Hey, God bless all of you. We'll see you back here on Sunday morning. Have a wonderful night. Could, we, could you lead us in that old course, It Will Be Worth It All When oh. We See Jesus? Okay. It's request hour. It will be worth it all.